Welcome back everyone, I'm Danny the Dinosaur Drawer and today I'm going to be showing you all how to draw the Allosaurus Generation 2 from Jurassic World Alive. So yeah, today is the last day of our marathon, it's day 26. It's really amazing that we've gone 26 days like I was doing a drawing every day. Extremely impressive. And yeah, I thought this would be a great drawing to finish off our marathon. And yeah, I apologize for the speed drawings for the last few days, just have had a cold, I'm still recovering from that. And that's why my voice maybe is sounding a little bit different. But yeah, let's dive into the tutorial. And yeah, we're going we're gonna to put in a circle right here on the left side of our paper. Once you've done that, you can attach like a little backwards S shape to represent the neck. So it's going to be facing to the left. We're going to have an oval here for the body. The tail is going to be going off to the right. We're going to have a thigh right here. So just realized we've drawn quite a few Allosauruses in this marathon. We've drawn the Allosaurus head. We've drawn the Allosaurus from the Battle of Big Rock. So this will be our third Allosaurus drawing in the marathon. So right now I'm just putting in the legs, a rough outline to stake out where the different parts of the drawing go. Let's put in the arm right here. We're going to see both arms. Then yeah, the head is going to be the most tricky part of the drawing because it's sort of like a three-fourths angle with the jaw open. So yeah, it's, it's more of a difficult angle to draw. But yeah, I think our outline is pretty much complete. The proportions look pretty good. So let's move on to the next stage. So we're going to be focusing on the head first. So actually right away, I'm going to put in a line here for the room of the upper jaw. It's going to curve slightly. And then right away, I'm going to add in the teeth. So Allosaurus has many teeth, and they're all about the same size. So we'll put those teeth in. And as soon as we get to this point, I want you to make the teeth a little bit larger than you normally make teeth. Because once there's like a black background behind it, the teeth immediately shrink and look smaller. So be sure to do that. Then I'm going to add in this muscle that opens and closes the jaw. Make sure you put a lot of lines in to show the graininess of that muscle. So then the lower jaw is going to curve like so. Then take it slowly backwards, then it gets a little wider again, near the back. So then we're also going to put in the tongue. To work carefully so we don't mess up the teeth of the upper jaw. So put in the tongue, it's going to come pretty far out. And then now we can add in some of the teeth of the bottom jaw. And I am going to have to erase a little bit of the tongue and the side of the jaw, so they won't get in the way of the teeth. So make it to the teeth curve slightly inwards. That's what it looks like in the Allosaurus from Generation 2. So if you play Jurassic World the game, comment below. I did play it for a little bit, but then I'm not really into video games, so I didn't play it for very long. But yeah, I tried it out. It was kind of fun. But yeah, the dinosaurs definitely looked really cool. So This is actually the only dinosaur from Jurassic World world alive that I've done in this marathon. Probably should have done more, but I had so many other things people were asking me for. So I'm just closing up the bottom jaw there. You can add some cross-hatching the lower two-thirds of the bottom jaw. And cross-hatching just means taking your pencil strokes in two different directions. So we'll do so like that. And then if you have a shading pencil, now would be the time to get it out. I'm going to shade in between the teeth up here. Both, if you have a regular pencil, just press a little bit harder. And if you guys are interested, I'm using a 3B shading pencil, which I probably should have sharpened. Yeah, it's, it's, it's working, so that's what matters. Then some of the shading will continue on the tongue here.
and shade a little bit around the tongue a little bit in between some of these teeth okay so let's move on to the top of the head here we're going to put in the eye it's going to be rather almond shaped and the pupil is going to be facing forward like so the allosaurus actually looks kind of happy in this picture which is kind of funny since it's like a predatory dinosaur but yeah let's add in some wrinkles around the eye here it's sort of got like an eyebrow ridge which makes it look a little bit meaner because it's curved up like so it's got like lots of studs and knobs on it that's like a really wrinkly texture so yeah it's got like a lower bunch of studs and spikes here on the cheek and then here we have the classic spike above the eyebrow there's going to be like a little ridge here that goes to the very front of the snout and it's got two of those two of those fancy crests So you might want to put like a light line down the center in between of them just to show the symmetry of the drawing. And then we'll add in the nostrils, which are teardrop shaped. Then I'm going to add some lines coming up from the gum here. Add more refinement. I'm going to put in the side cavity. I'll also shade this in. I'll darken up this little eyebrow crest. Gonna add some darkness around the edges here for a little bit of added refinement and we're almost done with the head so it's gonna finish off the back of the head we can't really see the ear at this point because of the angle and the neck actually connects right up here and curves down just like we put it in our outline the chest will be right about there. So the neck does have some spikes, so we're going to see those beginning right there. Spikes are super easy to draw, just they're like exactly like little triangles. Like so. I might add a little bit of darkness behind each one. Then I'm going to have some curved lines to show the shape of the neck. I'm going to put in like a few veins here on the bottom of the neck. A few curved horizontal lines. And yeah, be sure to add scales, like if you have the patience and stuff, be sure to add scales. So. You can just put those like in lines on the side of the neck, you know. And I'm also going to add some shading on the bottom of the neck here. The shadow of the bottom jaw. Then after that, yeah, we can move on to the chest. And here's where we're going to have the shoulders popping out the sides. So I want to put like two parentheses for the shoulders, that's basically what they look like. Then add some shading to show the roundness. And then we're going to add in the upper arms. So I'm going to put a little line there to separate the bicep and the tricep. And we're going to put in the forearm. 
Sahalosaurus did have more muscular and larger arms than T-Rex. And they also had three claws, which was probably more useful. So Allosaurus definitely used its claws when it was hunting and stuff. T-Rex maybe used them for last resort. But yeah, they were pretty small. Okay, so now I'm adding some scales on top of them, each finger. These more rectangular scales. And I'm going to take my pencil and darken up the spaces in between the fingers here. I'm also going to color in the claws. Just color in the claws nice and black there. Again, I'm going to add some curved lines to show the curvature of the forearm. And then we can pretty much add the exact same arm onto the other side. If only we could copy and paste. That would be nice, it would save us some time. So this arm is pretty much the same, the fingers are folded up. We're not going to see much of the third finger, which is going to be hidden behind the first two. And we're only going to see the first two claws. I'm going to add in these rectangular scales again. And the difference of this arm and the front arm is that this one's going to be a little darker. It's going to have some more shading. So it's on the inner side. I can shade in the chest a little bit. Pretty much the whole underside of the Allosaurus will be shaded in. So now we're going to move on to the torso. It's going to have a little bit of those shoulder blades sticking up there. We're going to add a little bit of roundness to the belly. And the back is also going to arch up. Slight curve down and back up again and then we'll connect to the tail. So spikes do continue on top of the back and they actually fade away at this point but then come back very large above the hips and that's probably where they are the largest and then they fade off and disappear. So they fade off and there are no more spikes on, on the tail. So guys I will probably add some more you know, more scales and stuff like that later in the drawing. But I'm just going to show you guys the basics because really scales are so, like, so boring to draw scales. It takes forever. But I will add a little bit of shading here to show the shape of the spine there. It has a few veins on the belly there. And then, yeah, I'll take my shading pencil and and really darken up the underside of the belly. Like so. Then I'm going to be careful here and shade lightly. I'm trying to make the belly look a little bit round. I'll take my finger here and maybe smudge a bit. Okay, I think we can move on to the legs. So here we got the front thigh. So remember, Allosaurus weighed around two tons, so it had to have very, very strong legs to be able to hold up all that weight. So the legs and muscles are gonna be quite large. So we're gonna put a line there to show the separation. Then again, some more curved lines. And it's very important to make it make sure the leg looks like looks like it's attached to the body, you know. So we'll do that with some wrinkles and stuff. 
and then here we're going to have the knee. So for the knee you want to put some more parentheses. I'm going to put in the calf. It's going to have a very wide ankle. And then here's where the feet are going to split. Let me move my camera. In several occasions I've filmed with like with the camera cutting off some of the drawing and I haven't noticed it. But today I caught myself. So yeah, we're gonna put in the three toes and the three claws. So I'm actually gonna put in the claws first. This works well for me for some reason, <laughs> putting in the claws first and then adding the toes afterward. It works some of the time, not all the time. Sometimes I have to erase the claws. But yeah, I put in the three claws. Now I'm going to put in the toes. So this one's probably a little bit wide. And also guys, erase some of the outline mess. I always do a really sloppy outline, so I end up having to erase a lot of it. So the feet look pretty good. I'm going to move this, this claw slightly back, because the middle toe is the longest one. So there we go. That looks a little bit better, a little more proportionate. And similarly to the fingers, we're going to add scales to the top of each toe. Add a little line here, I guess almost like a C shape, to show some more definition in the sh in the heel there. And I might thicken up the ankle. And I might actually thicken up the calf as well, because the feet look really big, so I want to make make the leg look a little larger. And back here, we're going to have some curved vertical lines that are going up and down. Yeah, these curved lines are very paramount. You have to put them in. Okay, so now I'm going to draw the opposite leg. And this one's not going to be too hard because it's mostly going to be shaded in. Put in the knee. This one's going to be bent back a little bit more. This reference image was taken from like the Allosaurus when it's in battle, so it's like in a crouching position right here. Like it's ready to leap forward or something. So I'm just going to take a moment to erase a bit here. To give me some more space to work with. So I put in three toes, three claws there. Now this foot is going to look a little bit smaller, and that's completely because of perspective. The so things that are farther away are going to appear smaller. And you want to make sure the toes are relatively flat on the ground. Sometimes I make the toes look like they're crooked. I'll try and make it so they're relatively straight. The feet are going to be are not going to be too shaded in, so I'm still going to add in these scales. Also, add a little bit of color in between the toes. When I say color, I just mean like darker. A darker shade of gray. So there you guys have it. Let's add a little bit more of these curved lines. And I'm going to take my pencil and round strokes. And 
color the better part of the calf. A little bit of the ankle here. So the feet are looking good, the legs are looking good. I think we can move on to the tail next. So the tail is probably the simplest part of the drawing. You just want to make sure it, it gradually gets thinner until it comes together at a point there. Then we have a midline that splits the tail into two halves. And then, so on the bottom half, we're going to have lines that are horizontal. And then on the top, we're going to have curved vertical lines. So the two different strokes go well together. That can be a little strenuous because we have a lot of tail here. So yeah. And again I'm going to add some more shading, especially on the bottom side of the tail. There we go. Um, I might add a little bit of shading here to the calf. Just looking for a few other places that I can apply my pencil. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of ground here. A little bit more of a shadow. Because it looks weird sometimes if you draw a drawing and there's no ground or shadow underneath the dinosaur. And now that I'm looking at it, I might widen up this thigh a bit. I think it should be larger. That looks a little bit better to me. I mean, elephants have like four feet, so it makes sense that they can hold up all their weight and stuff. But yeah, the meat-eating dinosaurs were very large and only had two legs. So that's an amazing amount of pressure on each leg. Just going to touch up a few spots where I probably got out of the lines. So I'm going to add a little bit of scales and I'll see you guys at the end of the drawing. So as you guys probably saw, I spent around five minutes just touching up my drawing a bit, added a few scales. But yeah, overall I'm satisfied with how it looks. So I'm going to sign my name in the corner here and put in the date. So guys, it feels so good to be finally finished with the marathon. It was a huge commitment. It was like, honestly, some days I didn't feel like doing a video at all. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I will see you guys later. Probably not tomorrow, though. Because <laughs> I'm going to take a little break from drawing. Just a little break. So I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching.